And we're back now with Congressman Gerald Nadler, who's in New York, former Vermont Governor Howard Dean, who joins us this morning from Burlington. Well, uh, Congressman Nadler, uh, you are an Eastern liberal uh, and proud of it. Uh, you didn't like this very much. Uh, you heard what uh, Mr. Axelrod said. He looks like uh, he thinks what's going to be voted on is about what they put forward. He doesn't see any changes coming. Are House uh, Democrats going to go for this? Well, we uh, passed the resolution in our caucus the other day saying that we would not permit uh, this deal to come to the floor without some changes. How major those changes would be to, would have to be to, uh, for, for members of our caucus to let it come to the floor, I don't know. I certainly hope that there are very major changes in this. Well, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? There are three, uh, there are three and, and looking at it from the long term, there are really three major problems that I see with this. Firstly, the... Uh, uh, the Republican blackmail here, they're really saying like a bunch of gangsters, that's a nice middle class tax cut you got over there, uh, pity if something would happen to it, and unless you give the millionaires and the billionaires a long term tax cut, we're not going to permit the middle class uh, to get it, uh, uh, to continue its tax cut. But that millionaires and billionaires tax cut will cost $700 billion added to the deficit over the next 10 years, which we can't afford. Now I know that this is a, a two year extension, but if we succumb to that blackmail now, when both the middle class and the upper end tax cuts expire in two years in the middle of a presidential election, why would I expect that the president and the Congress would then have the political uh, uh, gumption not to submit again to the Republican blackmail and in effect permanentize this? So I believe that voting for this now may be to permanentize these upper end tax cuts at $700 billion a decade, which would be the culmination of a 30-year Republican plan to starve the beast to, to, uh, to create deliberately such massive tax cuts that we're going to have to do what they really want, which is to cut Social Security and cut Medicare, cut aid to education, right. housing, and everything else. Let me, let Second, me, let me just stop you right there, because that's going to be a very long answer, and we'll get back to the rest of it. But what I'm asking you is, would you be willing to let everyone's taxes go up in order to stop uh, that uh, extending those tax rates for the upper income people? I don't think that's the alternative. I think the alternative is to say we're not going to submit to that blackmail and let the president and the Democrats go to the people the, who the polls show want the upper end tax cuts uh, not to continue, but want the middle class tax cuts, and say, don't submit to the blackmail. I, I believe that if we conducted a campaign like that for a couple of weeks or a few weeks or some time period, we'd win that, and that's got to be done. All right. Let me go to uh, Howard Dean. Uh, Governor Dean, you said uh, earlier this week that the president uh, has got to start paying some attention to the people who got him where he is. And uh, uh, you said he's, he's got to find some way to heal this rift with the left side of his party. How, how serious is that from his standpoint? Uh, I mean, could he be facing an opponent in the, in the 2012 primaries here? I don't think he's going to face an opponent uh, in the Democratic primary. I think that would be a bad thing for the country, and I think it would be a bad thing for the Democratic Party. The history of people running against presidents in their own party is the challenger loses, and then the president is weakened and loses. And, you know, the president has done some things that I think are terrific. This is not one of them, uh, but I, I think he will not get an opponent. What do you think is going to happen here, Governor? Do you think in the end the House Democrats, uh, like Congressman Nadler, will come around just looking well, at Well, here's, the, here's point? the big problem with this, uh, Bob. This is terrible for the country long term. Uh, and it's not just the things that Jerry was talking about. It's, first of all, we're going to find out if the Republicans are serious about the deficit. This tax cut's not paid for. And the biggest part of the deficit, in, as, if you project out till 2018, is the Bush tax cuts. That is what causes 60% of the deficit. Second of all, the 2% payroll tax sounds great, but in fact, they take it out of the Social Security Trust Fund. Now, here we are complaining about the Social Security Trust Fund going broke, and we take $120 million, a billion dollars of revenue out and use it for a a payroll tax mitigation. This is a short-term Washington fix. It does nothing about the biggest long-term threat to America, which is the deficit. I don't hear Republicans or Democrats talking about the deficit. There is no pain in this agreement. This is the easy way out for everybody. As much as everybody is complaining and hooting and hollering, this is an inside-the-beltway fuss, and somebody needs to do something about the long-term problems of this country. It's not in this bill. Well, Congressman Nadler, let me go back to your objections. It seems to me like uh, it's going to be a difficult thing for the president to bring some of your uh, colleagues around, because in that Democratic caucus, I mean, people heard through the doors some of the shouts. I asked uh, uh, Mr. Axelrod, how did the president feel about some Democrats actually using the F word to describe him? Uh, uh, it seems like this is a really wide divide we've got here between a Democratic president and his uh, Democratic House members. 
Well, it is a really wi wide divide uh, for, for several reasons. People do not want to see those tax cuts for the upper income people uh, permanentized, which we feel this may do. Second of all, uh, Governor Dean is entirely right about the long-term risk to Social Security here. Now, this one-time, one-year, $120 billion uh, tax cut in Social Security taxes will be paid for out of the general fund, but that, for the first time, starts getting the general fund to, to subsidize Social Security for $120 billion a year and bring Social Security into the deficit debate, which greatly undercuts the political support to avoid eviscerating Social Security a few years down the road. So that's a second major problem, which we don't want to see. And the third is this giveaway on the estate tax, which over 10 years is $115 billion more than we should be doing. Uh, do you think if this does not get done somehow in this lame duck session, it's going to be easier next year when you have a more liberal Democratic caucus and a more conservative uh, Republican caucus? Because it's definitely going to be that, because that was the impact of these elections. I don't think it's going to be more easy. I think it'll be probably somewhat more difficult, but the fight hasn't been made. We haven't gone to the country and said, do you want to submit to the Republican blackmail in order to keep the middle class tax cuts by increasing the deficit by $700 billion to give the millionaires and the billionaires their, uh, let them keep the, their tax cut? And that issue has to be made and go to the country, and I think we win on that. I think well, the Republicans have to back down. Uh, I that. mean, uh, uh, Governor Dean, what, what, what's the congressman talking about here? Isn't that going to be kind of hard to go to the country now? I mean, we've already had an election here. What, what do you do when you go to the country? Well, look, I mean, the, the, this is already on down the track. I mean, it's, you know, once you make the offer and you come to the deal, it's going to be pretty hard for the president to pull back and then change his uh, mind in midstream. The truth is, I don't think this is all that bad for the president politically. Uh, because he, he is going to be seen as acting presidential and bringing both sides together and all that stuff. The thing that bothers me about it is we have yet to deal with the biggest problem that's facing this country, which is the size of the deficit, and nobody's doing anything about it. If you just keep it, if you keep doing what people like, uh, which is cutting their taxes, you're going to have a bigger deficit, and we're going to be in weaker in the long term. And I, I just don't see how that contributes to the long-term future of the country. Well, so what sure, it's, e it's easy to promise everybody tax cuts all the time. You got to make some cuts if you're going to do that. Well, I mean, are you? Do you advocate letting all these uh, tax cuts run out, as it were, and having no. everybody else's, everyone's no. taxes go up in January? I don't advocate the middle class tax cuts expiring because it is really is clear that the middle class is under a lot of stress and that every dime you take out of their pockets is a dime that isn't going to go back into the economy. Uh, but ultimately these tax cuts, all of them are going to have to expire at some time and if you don't do that, you've, you're facing numbers that are unfathomable uh, eight years from now. Well, we uh, clearly, uh, Congressman Nadler, we're in the land of uh, poorer options here. There's no, there's no question about that. But how can you prevent people's taxes from going up uh, next year if you don't come to some compromise with Republicans on this? Well, I think you're going to have to come to a compromise, but this is a bad compromise because, as Governor Dean said, it really sacrifices the welfare of the country long term. I would say that the second largest problem we face long term is the long term deficit. The more immediate problem we face is to create more jobs right now, and we have to do that, but you can't do it at the expense of permanentizing these upper end tax cuts and the estate tax cut and jeopardizing Social Security down the road. Do you feel that the president has betrayed his party, Congress? No, I, I'm not going to say the president betrayed his party. I think that um, uh, he probably should have stood a, a little uh, stronger and, in, and, and, and not uh, um, um, gone along with the, what, what, is a, what is the Republican blackmail attempt. Right. And now he thinks that he, we can fix this in two years. I'm more skeptical of that. All right. Well, I want to thank both of you for giving uh, that Thanks. side of the story. And we'll be back in a moment. I'll have some final thoughts.